In this lecture, we are going to deal with ARM microarchitecture. So, first of all, we would like to understand what do you mean by a microarchitecture. So, microarchitecture is nothing but a connection between combinational logic and the architectural state elements or processor state elements. So, that if we are expanding the statement, microarchitecture is a specific arrangement of registers, ALU, finite state machines, memory, and other combinational logic circuits which are used for controlling all these processor state elements needed to implement an architecture. So, microarchitecture is a collection of all the processor state elements which is defined here along with the combinational logic which is controlling this processor state elements. So, next we will like to see what is meant by architectural state and instruction set. So, a computer architecture is defined by its instruction set and the computer architectural state. So, architectural state of ARM processor consists of 16 32-bit registers and status register. So, that is uh, meant by the architectural state of ARM processor. Any ARM microarchitecture will be containing all the states. Based on the current architectural state, the processor executes a particular instruction with a particular set of data to produce a new architectural state. Right. That means now the ARM will be in a particular architecture state or ARM operating state. At that moment, the processor will be executing a particular set of instruction. As a result of this instruction, it will move from one architectural state, that is the current architectural state, to a new architectural state. Right? Then some microarchitecture will be containing additional non-architectural states also to simplify the logic or to improve the performance. That means the non-architectural states, if you are telling an example, say an intermediate uh, uh, register for holding an intermediate data, that can be considered as a non-architectural state. Right? So more details we will see later. So non-architectural state, one example is a Say if you are having an intermediate state for holding intermediate result, that will be a non-architecture element. And they will be introduced in order to simplify the logic or to improve the performance. Then in order to make the architectural or uh, micro-architectural design easy, we are going to use these three certain ARM instruction set alone. Right? So based on the ARM in instruction set, you are going to and design various micro architectures in order to make it easy to understand we are using only three types of instructions first one is data processing instruction such as add subtract and or then memory instruction that is load and store finally branches we will see one by one in the forthcoming slides so what is the design process involved in designing a micro architecture so for designing a micro architecture, you should have two interactive parts or interacting parts. First one is known as data path, and the second one is known as control unit. So, each micro architecture you can classify it as say two subdivisions, it is having two subdivisions data path and control unit. Data path operates on the different words of data, or it is used for operating data, or it is used for movement of data inside a processor. So, data path contains memories, registers, ALUs, and multiplexers. But, on the other hand, control unit, it receives the current instruction from the data path. Right? So, it will be controlling the data flow in the data path. That means, it will receive the current instruction from the data path. And, it will tell the data path how to execute the instruction. Right? That means, control unit is controlling all the operations of the data path. So it receives the current instruction from the data path and it will tell the data path how to execute the instruction. Then these are the processor state elements required for designing a micro architecture for ARM. Right? So these are the processor state elements. First one is program under register file, status register, instruction memory and data memory. One by one we will see in detail. So what do you mean by program counter? So program counter is a particular register where it is read and written on every cycle independent of the normal register operation. Right? 
so the program control will be always read and written in all the all the cycles so here you can see this is a program under block so here pc dash means it is address of the next instruction right so next instruction address is given as input to pc and this dash 32 means it is a 32 bit bus and and the output will be pc so this pc is nothing but address of current instruction pc dash means address of next instruction pc means address of current instruction so that is meant by program under next one is instruction memory so instruction memory you can see it is having only one read port it is named as a it takes 32 bit instruction address input 32 bit address input because it is an instruction memory right so it will take 32 bit address and from that address it will read the 32 bit instruction or it is a memory so you can uh, take it as data but since it is an instruction memory it is reading the instruction present in this address and that instruction will be sent out through this read port right so if you are giving a particular address to instruction memory whatever instruction it is present in that address will be sent out through the read port that is a function of instruction memory next the processor state element is register file so this is a register file so a register file is nothing but it is a 15 element into 32 bit register register which holds the registers from r0 to r15 that is why it is 15 element now we are having 15 registers each register is of size 32 bit that is 15 element into 32 bit and an additional input r15 which receives input from the pc right so it is a 15 element register r0 to r r0 to r14 and one additional register r15 for receiving the input from the pc so here you can see it is having two read ports that is a1 and a2 and one write port that is a3 so a1 and a2 is used for reading a3 is used for writing the each read ports take four bit address input right so 2 raised to 4 means it will be used for specifying 16 registers right so by using this address you can address 16 registers r0 to r15 including pc so four bits are used for decoding which register you need to read so here the main function of register file is that when you are giving a particular you can you you, you are able to read the content of a particular register in a register file so how will you uh, decode a particular register by using this four bit code so if you are giving the four bit code as 0, 0, 0, 0, you are selecting r0 so the r0 content will be read out if you are giving it as 0, 0, 0, 1, then that means you are configuring r1 r1 register content will be sent out through this rd1 like that so here you can see two read ports are there a1 and a2 and one write port is there right uh, so the for read port uh, rd1 and rd2 will be the read port corresponding address should be given here write port will be w3 corresponding address should be given here so if you want to read two registers the first register should be decoded here second register should be decoded here right so first register content will be sent out through this second register content will be sent out through this it is in the case of read if you want to write you need to give the address here say if you want to read the if you want to write to r0 what you should give here 0, 0, 0, 0. that means this address decoder will decode the r0 register and whatever data you need to write you can give it here right so they read 32 bit register values on the read data outputs rd1 and rd2 so these two are used for reading the data the write port takes 4 bit address input in a3 and 32 bit write data whatever data you need to write you need to give here whatever data you want to read you will be reading from here whatever data you need to write you will be writing from here and there is a separate write enable for performing the write in the register file so if you want to write something you should assert this signal and in the next rising edge of the clock then the data will be written to it 
so if you want to read you can directly read no need of any uh, uh, enable signal but if you want to write you need to make this write enable as one then in the next rising edge it will be written right then a read of r15 that is this one will return pc plus 8 address value right so if you are reading from r15 it you will be getting whatever pc content is there it will be added with 8 the next processor element or state element is data memory so it is having a single read port that is rd and a single write port wd right and if its write enable is asserted then the data will be written on to the uh, data memory so here data memory you, you by using this data memory you can read and write data so if you want to read something from a data memory the data memory address 32 bit address you should give here then corresponding content of that address will be sent out through this rd right at that time write enable will be zero similarly if you want to write something into data memory you need to give that corresponding address for writing here then you should give the data in write port then with the write enable as one and in the next rising edge of the clock data will be written so it is same as the previous one register file writing so if you want to write something the corresponding address you should give here data you should give here right then w should be made as one and in the next rising edge of the clock whatever data you have given here will be written on to this address <coughs> then here we are going to three uh, here we are going to see three micro architectures used in arm architecture design first one is single cycle micro architecture multi cycle mi uh, micro architecture and pipelined micro architecture so these are the three different micro architectures seen in arm architecture so single cycle micro architecture so single cycle micro architecture executes an entire instruction in one cycle whatever instruction you are giving will be executing in one cycle it is easy to explain its operation and has a simple control unit and since it completes the operation in one cycle it does not require any non-architectural state elements such as intermediate registers because all the instruction will be completed in one cycle then however the cycle time is limited by the slowest instruction right so there may be some instruction will be taking more um, uh, more time even though it is single cycle so when you are considering the time for execution we, it, we should take the slowest instruction time then the processor requires separate instruction and data memory so that is the most important problem with the single cycle micro architecture it requires separate instruction and data memory which is difficult to implement so that is one of the problem of single cycle micro architecture next one is multi cycle micro architecture here in multi cycle micro architecture it executes the instructions in a series of shorter cycles previously if you are giving one instruction it will be executed in one cycle but here if you are giving an instruction it will be executed in a series of small cycles shorter cycles so simpler instruction can execute in few cycles right but complicated instructions can execute in more shorter cycles so uh, for each instruction different number of cycles will be there then in the multi uh, my multi cycle micro architecture it reduces the hardware cost by reusing the expensive components hardware blocks such as adders and memory for example the same adder can be used in different cycles for several purposes for executing a single instruction since each instruction is executed in shorter cycles in each cycle you can use the same adder component so that it will reduce the hardware cost and complexity right but non architectural limit should be incorporated so the multi cycle processor accomplish this that means in each cycle i told if you are using a same adder 
it will be accomplished by adding several non architectural registers for what for holding the intermediate result because one adder will be used in one cycle you will be getting a result that will be that intermediate result should be stored in a intermediate non architecture register from there it will be taken to the the same adder which is used before in the next cycle right so in each cycle you can use the same adder but for holding the intermediate result you should have non architectural registers then the multi cycle processor executes only one instruction at a time but each instruction is taking multi cycle multi clock cycle so that is already told then it requires only single memory accessing it on one cycle to fetch the instruction or to read or write data right so the advantage is that here in multi cycle processor you need to have only one instruction one memory single memory the from the single memory at a particular time you can fetch the instruction and another time you can read or write the data so a single memory is used for storing the instruction as well as data therefore multi cycle processor will be most important choice for inexpensive systems and the last one is pipelined micro architecture in pipelined micro architecture applies here it applies pipelining to a single cycle micro architecture right that is therefore it can execute several instructions simultaneously improving the throughput right so in each cycle you will be executing more than one cycles or more than one instructions in pipeline architecture so but for the pipelining you should add control logic combination logic to handle the dependencies between simultaneous executing instructions since you are having simultaneous instructions if you are having some dependencies some control logic should be added in order to handle those dependencies because from the result of first instruction then only the second instruction is to be executed you need to control that operation using a control logic which is additionally kept for this and it also requires additional non architectural pipeline registers right? because pipeline register is not part of a architectural states or state elements what you have seen so you need to have non architectural pipeline registers the pipeline process must access instructions and data in the same cycle right so in the case of pipeline processor in the same cycle they may be accessing instruction and data so they should use separate instruction and data caches for the purpose separate instruction and separate data cache should be there right then the added logic and registers since you are adding uh, additional logic and registers right you are increasing the performance of the processor right so by adding the additional control logic by adding additional pipeline registers you are actually increasing the performance by incorporating the pipelining feature so these are the three different types of micro architectures available for arm processor design